virtue epistemologists have conceived of intellectual virtues uh, in two relatively distinct ways, and so I want to talk about that uh, a, a bit to and you know get a feel for that and and what's involved there. Now, the best way to get at these two kinds of intellectual virtue, I think, is to go back to Aristotle uh, and Aristotle's uh, views, and many virtue epistemologists uh, go back to Aristotle in various ways. He's a he's a kind of uh, father of uh, virtue theoretic approaches in both ethics and uh, epistemology, uh, one of the founding fathers anyway. Uh, so on Aristotle's uh, view, there were two categories of virtue. There were on the one hand moral or practical virtues, which uh, are excellences regarding action, and then on the other hand there were intellectual virtues or excellences regarding thinking and judgment. And it's important to note here that the uh, the Greek word that we're translating as virtue really could could also be translated as excellence. So when we in English hear the word virtue, we tend to think moral virtue. But what Aristotle meant by virtue was simply excellence. And basically what he was saying is there are moral or practical excellences and then there are intellectual excellences. And he thought that these looked uh, very different. So with respect to uh, moral virtues uh, or virtues uh, that uh, are tied to action, he thought of these as what you might think of as character traits or personality traits. So an example would be uh, uh, the moral virtue of courage or uh, the, um, uh, let's say, a moral virtue of uh, temperance or uh, um, uh, being temperate in 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 the way you approach pleasures, uh, something like that. So these are different personality traits or character traits which help you to negotiate uh, the realm of action, so to speak. Now, two salient characteristics of these moral virtues uh, for Aristotle was one: first, they were the result of uh, habituation. Uh, they were the result of doing things right over and over again, and then eventually you would form the habit of doing things a certain way. And it's really this habit which is the virtue. So, for example, take a courageous person. How do you get to be courageous? Well, in Aristotle's view, you get to be courageous by doing courageous things. So, at first, it might be difficult to do a courageous thing, but the more you do it, uh, uh, the better you get at it and the easier it becomes until it becomes a kind of habit for you and you can do it more automatically, uh, you can do it more easily. Um, uh, and so the courageous person is someone who, through courageous action, has learned to be a courageous person. So it's not just a trait of the action, it's now a trait of the person. Um, another salient characteristic of uh, uh, Aristotle's um, moral virtues is that they involve uh, deliberate choice. Uh, they, they involve a kind of willfulness where um, uh, the virtuous person makes the right choices. Uh, the courageous person makes the right choices with respect to danger. The temperate person makes the right uh, choices um, with respect to pleasure or other temptations. Um, and in fact, these virtues could be thought of as habits of choice or habits of will. And um, by um, virtue of being habits of choice or will, they're also habits of action because, of course, what you're choosing is how to, how to act. Okay. Now, Aristotle thought of intellectual virtues or intel intellectual excellences in a, in a different way. These he thought of more like um, intellectual faculties or, or powers. So, for example... He thought one intellectual instant, uh, one kind of intellectual uh, excellence was a, a kind of insight into first truths or the most basic truths of reality. And then another kind of uh, intellectual excellence was the power of reasoning, which allowed us to uh, move from these first truths to uh, figure out other uh, important things. Um, uh, another example of an intellectual faculty or power, which would count as a virtue for Aristotle would be uh, insight into what things are good or what things are valuable. Uh, a certain kind of intellectual virtue gives you a kind of insight into that domain. Uh, 
these don't necessarily uh, involve habituation. They might, but that's not sort of characteristic of them. Neither do they necessarily involve choice or will. Again, they might, but that's not necessarily uh, characteristic of them. Now, when uh, contemporary epistemology first came on the scene, uh, there was early on a debate about the nature of intellectual virtues. And the debate was really about whether Aristotle was right to divide virtues into two categories. Uh, was Aristotle right that intellectual virtues should be conceived as powers or faculties uh, as opposed to moral virtues, which are conceived as character traits and personality traits? Uh, or should we think of intellectual virtues more like he was thinking of character virtues? So could we think of, say, intellectual courage uh, or intellectual um, fairness, uh, uh, intellectual uh, carefulness? These, these would be traits would, which it was argued uh, look quite like uh, Aristotle's moral virtues. They are sort of character traits or personality traits. They might involve deliberate choice and habituation in the way that the Aristotle's moral virtues do. And so one, one, some virtue epistemologists argued that, you know, that's the way we should think of intellectual virtues, really on the model of Aristotelian moral virtues. Whereas other virtue epistemologists argued that, no, Aristotle was right, that moral excellences are different from intellectual excellences. And it's best to think of intellectual virtues as powers or faculties. And I think nowadays there's some consensus that that was probably a bad question because there's no reason why we have to say, well, they're either like this or like that, we can easily embrace a kind of plurality of intellectual virtues. We can say, look, there's more than one kind of intellectual excellence. Some intellectual excellences are more like character traits, personality traits. So we might, under that category, say, look, it's, an, it's you know, one way of ex being excellent is to be intellectually careful or to be intellectually fair or to be intellectually open-minded. Uh, things like this, maybe intellectually courageous even. Uh, these are perfectly well conceived as intellectual excellences and therefore intellectual virtues. But right alongside that, we can say there are other kinds of intellectual excellence as well. So acute perception or sound reasoning uh, or reliable memory. These are also now talking in the terms of cognitive abilities or intellectual abilities or powers, but they're also a kind of excellence in the intellectual realm. You could be better or worse at these things. Uh, these are things that can be evaluated as excellent or falling short of excellence. And so we just really have two kinds of intellectual excellence or two kinds of intellectual virtue. So again, the old debate, which you might see in some of the readings or whatever, the, the old debate about, you know, what is an intellectual virtue? Is it this or that? I think it's better to just leave that debate behind and just recognize that there are two kinds of intellectual virtue.